What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever Foodie Licious Friday featuring me, your host, Adrian Sullivan, uh, owner of Sully's Kitchen, food blog recipe creator. And I just want to say thank you to our sponsor and our host, ColumbusBlack.com. Uh, we're, we're bringing you something new. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things food, all things culture, uh, and, and really we want to make something special. But before we get into that, uh, let's make sure we take care of the, the, the house business. So you should be on Columbusblack.com. If you're not, you're on Facebook Live, and that's fine too. Make sure you go to Columbusblack.com and follow uh, all the social media channels for Columbus Black. But while you're on that website, make sure you join the mailing list. That's how you're going to find out about all the other events that are going on. You're going to see what other events are happening during the week. We're going to make this a, a program, a series, and it's going to flow through the entire week. So you got to meet all the other creators and folks that will be on the show with us today. Uh, so why are we here? Well, to be honest, I'm here because food is the great equalizer. If you think about some of the most in-depth, meaningful conversations that you've had in life, where you learned the lessons, you walked away feeling something, a lot of those probably happened over food or drink. So I wanted to create something where we could come and have that type of discussion. We could cook a little, we could talk about the places we love, uh, but ultimately where we could come together uh, and really get to know each other in a different way. So for me, this is my art form. Food is my art. I can't draw like other people. I'm not a painter, not a builder, a sculptor, creator. I'm not a fashion designer. I'm none of those things. But what I can do is mess with a pot and some ingredients. So for me, this is about sharing my art. I started cooking when I was 11 years old. Uh, my mom, God love her, uh, taught my sister and I how to cook at a young age. I think it was mostly because she wanted to keep an eye on us. Uh, but we jokingly say it's because we got tired of eating the same stuff all the time. Uh, and we wanted to learn a little bit more about what she ate. Uh, so my mom is a, a, an immigrant from Panama. She's been in the States for... Uh, obviously all of my life, but she's been in the state since about the late 60s, early 70s. Um, and man, she taught, taught me everything I know. Uh, she taught me how, how to put the love in food. She taught me that it's it's not just about the recipe. It's about what it makes you think about. It's about what it makes your heart feel. Uh, and I really just wanted to take that and run with it. So uh, over the years, I, I continued to try to, to, to grow my skill set. Uh, you know, she, she didn't want me working in kitchens too much, but, uh, she told me I needed to get a, a good office job, but the passion never went away. Uh, so I really started find, uh, looking for a way to, to, to find what I wanted to do and how to make that passion my own. So started catering, started working, started learning from some of the best people, uh, in Columbus in the industry, uh, and, and really just wanted to make it my own. So that's why we're here today. So I'm hopeful, I'm grateful that you're here, and I'm hopeful that this turns into something special. Uh, but it leads me to reason number two that I'm here. My goal, as I always used to say, and as I always used to tell uh, the founder of ColumbusBlack.com, uh, Kevin Lloyd, I don't want to be the next Black chef on Food Network. I, I want to be the first chef on Revolt TV. Uh, I want to be that first chef on the, on the channels that, that you watch that, that focus on the culture that really bring things together. Uh, but that's changed over the years. Uh, and now it's really about, I wanna be the curator of those experiences. So I'm gonna put a plug out there. If you are a creator, whether it's in the food space, whether it's in fashion and music, uh, whatever it may be, whatever your passion is, and you are from an underrepresented group, women, minorities, uh, it, do it doesn't matter, wherever you come from, if, if you want to share this platform with me, I want to share it with you. I want to make something really special together where it's not always me here every week. I may be introducing you to the world and allowing you to demonstrate your craft. We may be sitting down having a conversation. And man, when the pandemic's over, we might be able to do this in person and get around the table and really eat, really have a good discussion. So I'm looking forward forward to it. This, this could be something really, really special. So I'm excited about this. So what are we talking about today? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, you follow me on Facebook, you saw that I, I said I wanted to talk about a couple of things in this first episode. One of those is that viral TikTok pasta 
that everybody's been talking about. I really want to get into that because it leads into a broader discussion about appropriation in food. What do I mean by that? The fast paced way we live our lives today doesn't really leave much room for us to understand the origins of the things that we consume, or does it? So I think about this viral TikTok pasta. You've probably seen it. Uh, you grab a bunch of cherry tomatoes, some feta cheese, some other ingredients, you throw it in a pan, stick it in the oven for 30 minutes, and voila, you've got this TikTok pasta. But here's the thing about that pasta. It existed before TikTok ever did. What was interesting to me in learning about this trend, one of the things I never could find in any time I saw somebody post the, 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 their, this trend was who actually started it. So I did some digging of my own. And what I found was really, really interesting. And it's what made me want to talk about this today in our first episode of Foodylicious Fridays. In 2018, Martha Stewart, of all people, said, hey, I got an idea. If we roast some tomatoes with some herbs and we stick a block of feta cheese in it, when it comes out, you got a nice cheesy tomato dip that you can serve to your guests with crackers, with crostini, with bread, whatever you want. Put it out there in 2018. So technically, was Martha Stewart the first person that invented this viral sensation of adding tomatoes and feta? Maybe. I'm pretty sure tomatoes and feta existed before Martha Stewart, but that's where we go. So then fast forward into 2019. A young lady that lives over in, in, in the Scandinavian countries decided that she said, I'm going to take this and I'm going to tweak it a little bit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it a pasta dish. And so she took those ingredients. Uh, she decided to, to, to bake it off the same way, but when it came out, she mixed it up, she threw some spaghetti in it, tossed it together. Voila, you got this pasta. Uh, what's crazy about it, though, is the one thing you never see on TikTok. There's actually an official holiday in her country for this pasta. And they don't call it TikTok pasta. They call it unifecta pasta or oven-baked uh, oven baked feta. Uh, uni meaning oven. So she created this wave so much that in her home country, they couldn't keep feta on the shelf. It was out everywhere for months at a time because everybody was making it. Now here's what's crazy. Like 5 million people viewed this video when she put it out on her socials years ago. More people viewed it than actually lived in her country. That was bananas. So she definitely had a hit, definitely had a way. So then a friend of hers says, hey, I want to make this too. And she posts it. And the wave starts all over again. So in a span of about six months or so, it went from, hey, there's this obscure little pasta dish I like to make. It's my comfort food for this young lady. All the way into, it's now on wave two in their country. Fast forward a little bit more. Later in 2019, a chef here in America finds it says, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a couple of tweaks on it myself, and I'm going to send it out to the world. But she did one thing that's so important as it relates to being a creator, but also respecting the culture and the place that this comes from. She made sure to credit the person that she saw first do it. That's where social media is right now. When we see these trends, everybody wants to jump on them. And all of a sudden, here's this way that everybody's doing, they're posting, but you never see the person get credit off of that. What's wild to me is if you go out and you Google TikTok pasta, you won't even see the original creator in that first page of Google results. You got everybody else who's an influencer that's listed there in the Google results telling you how to make this pasta. So the original creator isn't even getting credit for this pasta. So when I saw that, it made me think, do I really want to be a part of this way? And I thought about it, and it's like, why would I want to create something that everybody's creating that not even giving credit to, to, to the person who put it together? 
So what I wanted to do for our first episode was pay respect by telling her story. And her name is Jenny Hayering. And I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, I hope that I got the accents right. But Jenny, you invented this trend. It's phenomenal. Uh, but I want to take it in a little different direction. And here's why. While everybody's on this wave and feta cheese is selling out from here to Brooklyn, there's a couple things you need to know. One, you got to peel tomatoes if you're going to put them in sauce. Now, you might say, oh, well, we mash them up. I've seen people, they mash them up on the train, and that's cool. That's fine. But cherry tomatoes aren't in season right now. Cherry tomatoes aren't in season until June. So what you're getting right now, was it, it, it's not super fresh. It was grown somewhere. Who knows where? You don't know how it grew up or anything like that. So it's not the best ingredient you can get. Two. Cherry tomato skin has a totally different texture than the tomato itself. So even if you mash that up to the best of your ability, you're going to get these chunks of, of, of acrid, bitter tomato skin in this dish. So I didn't want to do that either. And then I'm thinking about it, and it's like, you know what? Feta is really salty. So in an eight-ounce block of feta cheese, so in one dry cup or one cup of feta cheese, dry, there's actually 200, 2,500 milligrams of sodium. Well, what does that mean? Essentially, if you make that dish and you eat more than a portion of it, you're getting like twice your, your, your amount of salt that you need in a day. So it's like, do I really want to make that? That doesn't seem super healthy either. So I said for our first episode together, we're going to make this a different way. We're going to pair some old traditions. We're going to put some new stuff together. But I really want to show you the method it takes the same amount of time. We're going to make it in one pot plus the pot I got for the pasta. So the same amount of dishes. But I'm going to show you how to make this amazing uh, tomato cheesy pasta cheaper, better, fresher, and even more delicious. So I say we get started right now. As you can see behind me, I've got a pot boiling. We'll come back to that. That's for our pasta. But we're going to do this live and in person right up front. So we've got our cooker here. Going to flip that on. And this process is pretty straightforward. We're going to heat up our pan. We're going to add a little oil. We're going to get some garlic. Now, as we go through this process, I'm going to take you through step by step. And while we're waiting for the pan to heat up, I'm going to jump on to our Facebook jump in our session here and there we go and i'm going to walk you along the process so you can ask questions type them in the chat i'll respond out loud but we there we go but we're going to cook and have some fun all right so while the pan is warming up let's go over our ingredients we've got garlic We've got olive oil. We've got some crushed red pepper. I'll explain why in a second. We got some peeled tomatoes. We've got our cheese, we've got our pasta, and we've got some fresh basil. All right, so we are good to go. Let me expand my page here so I can see everything that's happening. There we go. Ah, we cooking now. There we go. All right. And, aha, full screen. Now we cooking. All right. So while we're doing that, I want to I want to clue you into to one thing. If you followed us on social media, we told you there was also a prize involved as well. And that's the Instapot that we're giving away. So let me. I got to mute myself. I didn't do that part. There we go. Got to mute myself. Um, we're giving away an Instapot. So how do you win the Instapot? First, you got to go on your phone and download the Myle app. M-Y-L-E. Making your life entertaining. So go to your app store, download the Myle uh, events app. Once you're in there, you want to find this event. You can find that under virtual food and bar. 
So when you find this event, you want to chat with the host and share why you think you should win that Instapot. So go do now while everything's warming up. And then we're going to come back together. I'm going to don my bandana because when I cook, I like to get into it. So, you know, you got to protect it from the sweat. Uh, but go download the Mile app, find our event, interact with our host, and you can walk away with the Instapot. And we'll get started here. So let's see here. Got to tie it up. There we go. All right. And we ready to work. So we've got a pan that's warming. I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit more. So anytime you're going to cook with olive oil, you never want to add olive oil to a cold pan. If you add olive oil to a cold pan, it's going to burn. By the time the pan comes up to temperature and heats up the oil, the olive oil will have burned. It's going to turn bitter. It's going to turn dark. Your dish isn't going to taste as good. So warm up your pan until the point that you can put your hand over for a couple seconds. It's hot, it's not too hot, it doesn't burn when you do that. So let your pan come up to temperature. And then we're gonna add about four tablespoons of olive oil. Now, I say about because I'm not measuring. You can measure. I always encourage you to measure. If this is your first time doing it, fantastic. Get a measuring spoon, four tablespoons of olive oil. I'm just gonna hit it. And if you wanna do the same when you run back to make this, that's fine too. So I'm gonna put about four tablespoons of olive oil and let that do its thing. Actually, that looks like a little closer to three. Do one more, there we go. So we got our olive oil in the pan, and we just wanna give this a second to come up to, te to temperature. Here's the thing with cooking with oil. See, we got this little bit of smoke. We got this, the, this little shimmer coming off our oil in the pan. That's perfect, that's what we want. So I've got some fresh diced garlic. When we cook together, I'm gonna show you how to dice your garlic like this too. So let me grab my spoon here, and we're gonna put that garlic in and listen for the sizzle. There we go. Come on now. Now, once I put this garlic in and I get it coated with the oil, I wanna cut my heat down just a little bit. I'm not trying to fry my garlic. I just wanna get it warm. I want it to start talking to me. And that's when you start to get that smell, you start to get that, ooh, that's garlic, somebody cooking something. That's when you know you're getting close. So turn your heat down, and you can see my edges are browning a little bit. That's okay. We just turn the heat down a little bit more, and we keep the garlic moving. Remember, we're not trying to fry it. We just want to brown it up a little bit, let it start talking to us. All right? So while we got that going, we'll give that about another minute or so. Drop that heat down a little bit. I wanted to do this this way so that you could see everything that was happening, so that you could ask questions, so that you could come back and make sure uh, that you were doing it the right way. So while that garlic is cooking off, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my tomatoes. So what I'm using is a can of San Marzano whole peeled tomatoes. And the reason I'm using this is because to me, if you're not gonna use fresh tomatoes, these are the best tomatoes you can get. And this can is super cheap. Total cost on this dish for us is only gonna end up being about four or $5 a person for this dish. You're not gonna get this quality of, of dinner anywhere else uh, for that kind of price. You, you know that, I know that. So see how our, our garlic is starting to brown up nicely? That's perfect. So what'll happen is when we add our tomatoes and, our, and, and, their, and their juices, that's just going, it's going to make that garlic melt. And that's what we want it to do. We, we cut it real thin for a reason. We want it to melt. It's going to evaporate into our dish and give us that good garlic flavor throughout. So I got my whole peeled tomatoes here in their sauce. You can see how fresh that is, how delicious it looks. This is going to go in in about, about 30 seconds or so. Let's do it. So we'll get ourselves ready. Throw a little juice in there. Now, tomatoes splatter. So if you're afraid of the splatter, that's okay. Just make sure you turn your heat down or take the pan off of the heat before you, before you add your tomatoes. All right, so make sure you get all that goodness out of there. Now, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna flip my pan so I can grab my handle here. And see these tomatoes, San Marzano tomatoes 
have few seeds. They're, they're a variety of plum tomatoes. So you can buy plum tomatoes at your grocery store too. And you can do the same thing I'm doing right here. But I'm just breaking these tomatoes up. You see now that sizzle kind of went away. And I need to bring this up to temperature here in a second. Now, tomatoes are acidic. So if you don't like the, the, the fresh, earthy, acidic taste of tomatoes, just add yourself a pinch of sugar, sweeten them up, especially if you're using fresh tomatoes and they're not in season. Just add a little pinch of sugar and you'll be all right there. Now, one of the things my mama taught me is we don't waste anything. So if I look in this can here, there's a lot of good juice down there. But I want to make sure that my, my tomatoes cook thoroughly. So I'm not going to pitch this can just yet. I'm going to fill the can up about a quarter of a way to a third, no more, with water. And that's going to let me add it to the sauce. It cleans out the can a little bit, uh, but it also gives a little water to the sauce for body. So I'm going to head to the sink. Just got a little bit of water. I'm going to swish it around here. All right, and we'll go ahead and add that right in. And now with the water, we can turn our heat back up without having to worry about all that popping going on. So while we're waiting for this to come up to temp, I'm gonna remind you again, to win the Instapot, you gotta go to your app store on your device, Download the Mile Events app, M-Y-L-E, stands for Make Your Life Entertaining, and find our event. And once you're there, you're going to interact with our host, and you can have a shot to win an Instapot. It's that simple. It's that simple. And when you're cooking in a pinch, you can't go wrong with an Instapot. We'll talk about, in a future episode, talk about some things you can do in an Instapot. Uh, that'll save you a ton of time. So we'll let this go. We're waiting for that to come up to a little bit of a boil. And while we're doing that, let's talk about our next ingredient. I say this ingredient because, again, cooking is about forging your own path, but it's also about paying respect. So one of the ingredients that you don't really see show up in this viral pasta, uh, and I hate calling it the viral TikTok pasta, so I'm going to refer to it as the name that she gave it, which is the oven baked feta pasta or the oven feta pasta, whichever one you prefer you can use. So she actually got interviewed when this craze hit all over again and this popped up on TikTok. She got, a, she got on TikTok. Jenny started sharing her original recipe and it was great. But one of the things she said that she, she always saw and it kind of bothered her a little bit is that one of the most important ingredients wasn't even being used when people used when people made the dish. And that's crushed red pepper. So she was using red pepper, some of it fresh, some of it crushed. We're gonna use crushed here. We're gonna pay a little homage, but we're gonna make this the way she intended it, uh, which is to make sure that we add the red pepper in there. So a lot, a little bit, whatever you choose, just take a, a good pinch from up high, Sprinkle that in there. You can see our tomatoes are starting to boil. I like my sauce a little angry. So I put a couple pinches in there. And I'm just going to work it through. Work it through. And we'll let that come back up to a bubble and a simmer. We want to pay respect to, the, to what the creator had envisioned. Anytime you're making a dish for the first time, I always tell people, Follow the recipe or do it the way that it was intended to be made. And then after you taste it the way that it was supposed to be made, then, then you can jump into uh, doing something creative and, and, and putting your own spin onto it. But at least try it the way it was intended the first time you make it. So we'll let that work. And while that's working, we're going to talk about our pasta. So the pasta I'm using today is a bucatini. It's just, just your basic spaghetti noodle, uh, a little bit thicker than your traditional spaghetti noodle, but I'm using a bucatini. I'm gonna follow the instructions because this is dry pasta. I'm gonna follow the instructions just like they are on the pack. So mine says it's ready in 13 to 14 minutes. I've already got my water up to a boil. Anytime you're making pasta, whether it's fresh, whether it's dry, 
I always see people not putting enough salt into their water. You notice we didn't put any salt into this sauce. And the reason is because when this pasta comes out of the water, it's going to have that salty texture. So what I always tell people, you, you heard uh, plenty of folks say this, your pasta water should be as salty as the ocean. So I got mine started before our show. Uh, it's literally cloudy uh, because of how much salt goes into it. But I'm going to open up my pasta here. And I'm going to grab out about this much, just enough for maybe one or two servings. So if you make a circle with your hand, uh, that's the amount that I'm trying to grab out of our package here. And the thicker your pasta, the longer it's going to take. That's why this bucatini is going to take about 13, 14 minutes to, to finish, because this is pretty thick. So I'm going to put it all together here, hold it up. Yep, I think I got what I was looking for here. Pretty good amount. I always like to grab a couple extra just to be safe. So we'll grab a few more. And I'm gonna drop that right into my boiling water. And I'm gonna let technology do its thing and say, Alexa, set a timer for 13 minutes. 13 minutes, starting now. There she goes, all, all right. Away. An Amazon package was delivered today. Now, Alexa, you're telling all my business now. I just needed you to set a timer. Don't tell my audience my packages are showing up now. All right, so our sauce is starting to bubble. So here's what we're going to do. Anytime you're making a tomato sauce, you can use dry herbs. That's totally fine. But if you can get your hands on fresh basil, which is pretty cheap for the amount you get in, in a pack. It, it, it's about 4 or $5 a pack, depending on where you get it. Um, I like to grow this in the summer when I can and use when I can. But I'm just going to take a section of leaves. First, I'm going to turn my heat down to about medium low because I just want this to simmer. I'm not going to do anything with these basil leaves except sit them on top. That's all we're going to do. We're going to sit our basil on top in the pan. Basil likes to steep like tea. Whatever you put it in, you just let it sit on top. It's going to do its thing. So I'm going to put my lid on. And we're going to let this go until our pasta is done. And we'll take another step and add our cheese here in a couple different ways in just a little bit after we pull our basil out. So why are we doing all of this? Well, again, it's about paying respect to the creator uh, of the dish. But at the same time, it's about putting our, our, uh, our, our, our own spin, our unique twist on it with the ingredients that we have. Sometimes we make substitutions out of necessity. So maybe you can't get fat. Maybe you don't have tomato money for the amount that it would take to make that dish. Um, maybe this is what you got. Maybe you got some canned tomatoes, you got some garlic. You can still have a fantastic meal out there. Paying respect doesn't take, take any more time than it takes to post your picture, post your video. You, you, can, you can show respect, you can show credit. You can actually Google all the times that this has happened and food appropriation and all these other things. But I want you to step back and think about if that was your family recipe. <laughs> Excuse me. Happens. <laughs> Excuse me. Red pepper gets me every time. I apologize. Step back and think about if that was your, your, your mother or father's recipe or your grandmother, your grandfather's recipe, your aunt or uncle. Think about if this came from your culture and you saw someone attempting something that you knew wasn't paying respect, how would you feel? The, the way we become more inclusive, especially as it relates to our everyday lives, but even more so in food, is taking the time to show respect for where something comes from. It's cool to appreciate it. It's, it's a beautiful thing when you expand your horizons and you embrace a new culture. But you got to pay the respect for where it comes from. So many times we see someone take an idea, take something, and, and they never give credit, and, and, and it goes off like they invented it, like they made it away. Well, the truth is, whether you say it or not, people know. People know where stuff comes from. I see in the chat my good friend Tanya mentioned Dalgona coffee. Hey, that has Asian origins, but nobody ever stopped to talk about that when they grabbed their hand blenders and, and everything else. To, to whip up some coffee. 
Nobody talked about the origins of where it came from. Oh, we suddenly have this new thing called Dalgona coffee. Okay, cool, but where did it come from? There's been a whole culture enjoying that coffee for centuries, but no one ever paid respect to it. So every time you're cooking, there's a few things that should go in your ingredient list every time. One is respect for your ingredients, respect for your equipment. The other one is love. It doesn't cost anything to show love or to show kindness to anyone. But when you do it to an underrepresented community, when you show love, when you show respect to an underrepresented community, you get paid back tenfold. When you show appreciation for someone's culture, they will invariably appreciate you. So that's what this is all about for us. This is about nothing more than showing respect in our first episode to a creator, to trends, to traditions. So even the way we're making this sauce, it's our sauce, but we're paying respect to how traditionally even the Italians would make a sauce. This idea of steeping basil, I didn't come up with that. When I was researching how to make my own version of my own marinara, my own meat sauce, my own ragu, every time I came across and said, hey, grab the basil leaves in my giant Italian cooking book, cookbook, it said, grab the basil leaves, set them on top, put the lid on. That's it. So this is about paying respect. So I'm making something that is completely our own but doing it in a respectful way to the cultures uh, that I'm borrowing from and that I'm taking from. And I'm acknowledging that. And that's what I want you to do. So if you make this dish, if you make our version, if you make the original version, that baked feta, um, just make sure you go out real quick. It doesn't take much to do a Google search. Type in who invented TikTok pasta, even though I hate that name. But go out and find the person that actually did it first. Maybe you think it's Martha. Maybe you think it's Jenny Heron. Hey, tag them both. Who cares? But show respect uh, w- when you're becoming part of the trend, when you're becoming part of the way. It's, it's as simple as that. There's nothing more that you got to worry about from there. So I want to do something here while our pasta is still cooking because it's, it's going back there. I'm going to take the lid off. And what I've got here, I grated up a block of Romano cheese. Uh, so I've got some, some, some Romano in a block. I want to talk about block cheese for a second. I'm giving you all types of lessons here today. So block cheese versus the grated kind. So when you buy grated cheese, one of the ingredients that they're not required to tell you is in the container is something called cellulose. Basically, there's little bits of paper in your cheese and it keeps it from sticking together. When you use the the pre-grated that you buy in the containers, now we all love it. If I make spaghetti, I'm going to have a mountain of grated cheese on top of it. But when you use it, especially if you're using it in a sauce, what you're going to get is a really gritty sauce because that's never going to be able to fully break down. So if you really want to make this into a cheesy sauce, let's take our lid off. We steep it in here. We looking good. And I'm just going to take a little bit of cheese and I'm just going to sprinkle it around. Grab another little handful. Now, I'm not adding a lot of this at a time for a couple of reasons. One. I need this to melt. I'm not trying to make lasagna here. So I need to give that time to work, give it time to melt. But two, Romano cheese is just as salty as feta cheese. If I put all of this cheese, if I put a whole block of cheese in here, this pasta gonna taste like pure salt. You're not gonna appreciate the tomato. You're not gonna appreciate the pepper that comes out of it. You're not gonna appreciate the flavor of the crushed red pepper that's in it. You're not gonna get that essence of basil. You're going to taste salt. That's just the straight up honest truth. You're going to taste salt. So we'll put a little cheese in here. If I lift the lid, you can already see it's, it's starting to break down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn up our heat a little bit because I want to give the sides of this a good stir. Let that cheese get down in there. And here's the best part. When we go to make our dish, we we'll plate this up. We throw all the cheese on it we want. We'll have us a good old time. So you notice I'm being careful not to push my basil down into the sauce. Trying to keep it closer to the center as I can. See the steam coming off of that, it's looking beautiful. Let that do its thing. I'm gonna step off to the side and check our timer, see what we're looking like. 
And we've got about four and a half minutes left to go. And then we'll be ready to do some fancy stuff. So in order to get ready, I want to grab a couple of things. And as you can see, this is, this is a real life kitchen. So we got everything we need right here. So let's see here. Now I'm a short person, but I'm gonna see if I can reach my tall bowl. So give me a second. Got him. All right. So we got our fancy bowl. There we go. That's why short people shouldn't put stuff on a high shelf. You struggle. So we got that there. We got our bowl ready. Push that out to the side. We got our, our, our strainer for our pasta. We're going to need a fork. I like a red fork. Red makes people want to eat. And I want a red fork because this is going to be fantastic. Check our sauce. We're looking pretty good. You heard my puppy yell because the doorbell went off. This is real life cooking right here, folks. Real life kitchen. That's my eight pound guard dog. Letting the world know this is her house. Get a little cleanup going here. And we are almost ready. Now, one other thing. So when this is done, in just a moment, we'll taste it. If we need salt, we'll add a little salt. If we don't, we won't. It's that simple. But we're trying to keep this basic. This is about appreciating the taste of the ingredients. So we're going to keep this really, really basic. In about three minutes, I'm going to show you the last uh, ingredient that we're going to add to our sauce. And then we'll add in our pasta. We're a couple minutes away. Actually, I'm going to check this. Yeah, it still needs a little time. All right. And if you got any suggestions for theme music for the show, shoot them to me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. So I feel like we need a soundtrack for this. I feel like we need a soundtrack for this. Um, I'm just, I'm really grateful to be here tonight with you guys. So I can't wait to plate this up. I can't wait to talk about where we go from here and what comes next. Uh, it's just, man, what a, what a great way to spend a Friday night. We stuck in the house for the most part anyway. Then let's spend it together cooking. Let's have a meal. Let's get to know each other a little bit. So I'm looking at our chat, looking at our, our Facebook Live. You can throw some questions out there if you have them, throw some comments out there, give us some feedback, whatever you got. But if you do nothing else, make sure you download that Mayo app, make it in your life entertaining. Go out to it, find our event, interact with our host, try to win an Instapot. Who doesn't love winning something? It's a Friday night and you can win something. Who doesn't love that? So give it a shot. Go out and try to win that Instapot and make it yours. And I'm loving how this sauce is looking. I'm gonna give it another stir because I see the bubbles coming up. This is looking beautiful. All right, there we go. Get that down in there. Losing my basil a little bit, so I try to push it back to the middle. There we go. And if you come across as you're stirring where you still got some pretty big tomato chunks, that's okay. Take your spoon, break them up. The longer they cook, the softer they'll get. There we go. Got something nice for it. My, my pan is trying to get away from me. I'm gonna have to get a new pan that has an actual flat bottom. There we go. Alexa, stop. So our pasta should be just about done. So I'm gonna grab a, my strainer and a bowl and we're gonna capture our pasta here. Cut the heat off so it finishes cooking. Right.
All right. So we got our pasta. But before I walk away from our pasta bowl, I'm going to get just a little bit of the pasta water in this lower bowl here. And this is going to help thicken our sauce. But before we can add it, we got to take the basil out. The basil has done its job. This is the other reason I like to keep the can handy. This makes a great little trash can. Grab that, pop that in there. Make sure I got it all. If you leave a strand or two, it won't hurt nothing. There we go. Basil out of there. Now, let's take this about a half a cup of pasta water and we're going to add it right into our sauce. So all of that starch that cooked off our pasta, and I'm gonna turn this up, get it, to, get it up to a quick center here. All that starch that cooked out of our pasta is now in that water. That pasta water, this is why you don't drain it. That pasta water is great for thickening up your sauce. So by adding about a half a cup, oh, I found my other basil leaf, I thought there was one more ride in there. Adding about a half a cup, We'll let this come up real quick and it'll help our sauce thicken before we add our pasta in and toss it all together. All right, so we'll let that go. And think about it, super simple vegetarian dish you got right here. Uh, you, could add, you could totally add meat to it if you wanted to, your prerogative. Uh, you could swap out the cheese for vegan cheese, uh, gluten-free vegan pasta, you, you could turn this and whatever you want it to be. This is so easy to turn into a gluten-free, uh, fully vegetarian, fully vegan meal. Uh, it, it seems kind of almost too simple when you think about it. So as this is coming up, I'm going to keep it moving. Remember, we got the cheese in there. I want the cheese to melt, not burn. So while we're letting that pasta water do its thing and meld the sauce together. I'm just going to keep it moving. Keep everything going. Let it work. There's my guard dog again. Told you, real life cooking over here in Sully's kitchen. This is not a set. This is a real kitchen. You see the magnets on the fridge. You see the ingredients on the counter. This is not your food network show where somebody is behind the scenes doing all the real cooking. This is me and you together, and we getting it. All right? So this is coming together really nice. Really, really nice. We'll let that form some big bubbles here for just a second. There we go. And now let's drop our pasta in and cut our heat. Go ahead and turn your heat off. Turn your heat all the way off. Turn your heat all the way off. And let's get that pasta into the sauce. Let this marry. Let them come together. They talking to each other. The pasta saying, how you doing? The sauce is saying, we good. How about you? And we good over here. So I'm going to take my spoon because this is just me. Take a little sauce. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. All the little animal friends must be outside. Just keep running outside to bark out. All right, so I don't think we need any salt, so I'm gonna put my salt away. I do want just a little bit more of the crushed red pepper in my sauce. I like it, so we'll put that in there. Get that around there. All right. Our heat is cut. Our pasta's singing with our sauce. And now here comes the fun part. Kitchen gadgets are always fun to me, but there are none more fun than giant kitchen tweezers. That's what these are. So I'm gonna take these giant kitchen tweezers and I'm gonna roll me up some pasta. You can do this with a, uh, a carving fork too, totally works. But I'm gonna roll me up a big amount of pasta I'm gonna bring it over here to the side. I'm gonna squeeze. I might lose some of it. That's okay. We just reset. There we go. Reset. Now we're gonna get to the end of this spectacular dish. 
and my equipment is not going to want to cooperate, but that's okay. We're going to make it anyway. All right, so we take it. We lay it in our bowl. Swirl it out. Come back for a second helping. There we go. That is much better. There we go. We'll put that on top. See all those chunks of tomatoes? You see our cheese is melted in there. Looking glorious. We got our garlic. We know we got that hint of crushed red pepper too. We added a little bit more at the end. We'll put that there. Now, got to clean the bowl. We'll grab our, pops, our, our paper towel. And this is called crumbing the plate. In other words, just cleaning up the edges, making it spectacular. I'm gonna do a couple things here. Grab a little bit more cheese right there on top, that fresh grated Romano cheese, a little more salt if you like that hit. I'm gonna take a fresh basil leaf. And here's what I like to do. Just take it in your hand, roll it up from the, from the stem side, that's where you start. So you roll it up. Roll it up nice and tight, tight as you can get it. And then here's the fun part. You start breaking off pieces. And just like that, you have got a delicious, Quick and easy, 25 minute fresh tomato pasta that you can enjoy and make yourself at home. Looks fantastic. Now, you know the rule is you got to get a picture of it. So, here's what we're going to do I'm going to hold it up. And then when we post this live stream, we're going to come back and we're going to get that live shot. All right. So, there we go. Up close and personal, our version of the viral pasta, but it's viral because we made it together, we made it ourselves, we made it fresh, and we pay respect and honor to the creators that came before us and introduced it to us, as well as the traditions that go into making it. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Food Delicious Fridays. We got more coming. We're gonna talk about your favorite restaurants, favorite places to eat. We're gonna talk about drinks. We're gonna talk about entertainment. We're going to bring our friends from other worlds into our kitchen on Food Delicious Fridays and have a conversation. With that said, one last time, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you download that Mile app. Make sure you go out and find our event and interact with our host. Time is running out. Make sure that you're getting your chance to win that Instapot. Two, head out to columbusblack.com, join the mailing list. Look at the bottom of the page for links to their socials. Make sure you follow them on the socials. And last but not least, if you are gracious enough to grace me with your presence and yet we are not connected together on social media, you can find me on Instagram at sullies.kitchen, S-U-L-L-I-S dot kitchen. You can find me on Twitter the same way. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Just search for Sully's Kitchen. I'll be right there. I'm grateful that you were here. I hope that you keep coming. I hope that you become a regular as a part of our discussion into the food space. I hope you learned something today. And I hope you walk away with not only an amazing meal, but an amazing feeling because that's what food should do for you. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming out tonight. And we'll see you next time.